What's going on guys? We're, today we're going to be talking about the Terminator Infinity Circle. This is the new campaign that I'll be running over on the Games on Deck crew. Now, I decided to go with the Terminator for something different, you know. Um, you know I've had the fantasy thing for quite a while and I just did the superhero icons campaign. It's been a long time since I actually ran a really good sci-fi game. Um, I'll get to the rule system probably at a later date. But, you know, tonight we're just going to be talking about what I have planned for this uh, campaign and, you know, some of the ideas that I have. Now, this is actually going to be the start of a um, prep series that I'm doing. I'm going to take you through the steps that I'm taking on starting the campaign itself to how I'm setting up the rules and the house rules for the system. And then from each week to week, I'll be doing a campaign prep session to uh, show you how I prep for each game, too. So you'll be able to get from the beginning to the end of this campaign. Um, and you all also get the uh, you know the game itself as well. So you can see here we got the Terminator Infinity Circle. Now, the Terminator movies have a conundrum of paradoxes and time warp and time whatever you want to call them. It's a very confusing series if you really try to get into it. Um, it'll make your head explode. But for the simplicity of this game, I didn't feel that the time uh, jumping really played into it a whole lot. Um, I'm going to be focusing more on the war between man and machine. Now, that's not to say that uh, time travel isn't going to be a part of the game, because, you know, it's probably going to come into it, it's probably going to be referenced, especially towards the end of the game. But I don't have plan on having the players, you know, swap time and travel and do all those sorts of things. Um, it creates a huge headache for the GMs. I've tried it once before, and it was, it was just an absolute nightmare. So... Keep in mind that there are going to be some spoilers here. If you haven't seen The Terminator, the original, you know, 1984 movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all of them, then you should go watch it. Otherwise, be ready to have a few um, spoilers thrown at you. So don't say I didn't warn you. Now, right here, what we have is a timeline. Um, we have 1984. That's when the first Terminator began. Um, the whole movie based around um, Terminator going back in time to kill Sarah Connor and another guy by the name of Kyle Reese going back in time to save her. You know, it was his job to protect her from the Terminator and eliminate the Terminator in some way. Now, the way the original timeline was set up, he, his job was to go back, you know, save Sarah Connor and make sure that she had her child, who was eventually named John Connor, so that he was there to... Um, create the human resistance against the machines. If the Terminator went back in time and eliminated John Connor, then the resistance wouldn't be there, and the term, or, you know, the AI system, the computers, which is called Skynet, basically would have took over the world. So, that's the basis of it. Um, like I said, go watch the movie if you haven't, but... 1997, you see there's a little JD there, that stands for Judgment Day. That is the day that Skynet, the main computer AI, became... Uh, went online and became self-aware, and in a moment of panic, all the humans tried to shut it down. You know, in response to that, Skynet sent some nukes to uh, Russia. Russia, you know, responded back, sent a nukes, and then everything got nuked. And that started off what was basically World War III, but it was between man and machine, as uh, Skynet tried to take over the world. And basically, it was like a child having a tetra tantrum. Um, it, you know, it wanted to eradicate all human life. And that's where, you know, it leads up to. Now, 2029, now you got to keep in mind from 97 from when that happened all the way on up through to 2029 is basically the whole area of World War III, that whole time area. Um, now, like I said, there was a guy named John Connor who ended up uh, leading the human resistance. He, you know, broke free from the machines, um, enslavement camps, and he built a uh, rebel army of humans to fight back against the machines. Now, in response to that, at some point in time, right around the 2029 20, mark, the humans dealt some sort of major blow to Skynet. Um, it's never really exactly detailed what it was, but whatever it was, it caused Skynet to send one of its Terminators back in time to 1984 to eliminate John Connor from being born. And, you know, as I said before, that's when John Connor sent back Kyle Reese into 1984 to protect him so that he was born, thus making sure that, you know, things follow the timeline as they were supposed to. Now, one of the really cool concepts the Terminator has is that there's all different timelines. Um, you know, somebody gets thrown back in time 
it doesn't just follow the same timeline it creates a whole new timeline now right here they get the blue mark this is where the terminator and where kyle reese got sent back in time they go from world war well 2029 and they get sent back to 1984. as soon as they appear in 1984 an entirely new timeline is created they do not follow this timeline anymore this is the original timeline okay as soon as they appear it creates an offshoot right here and this eventually would lead into what would be Terminator 2. But you got to keep in mind, there are two separate timelines. What happened already is there. That's one time that, that happened. But when he sends them back, that creates a whole new timeline. So they both are basically existing simultaneously. Now, really, that whole part of it is not going to be important to this game at all. What is important, though, is this little spot right here. This is where my campaign is going to take place. Now it's going to be in 2029, and it's going to take place um, probably a month, maybe two months, and, you know, kind of narrow it down. I'm not exactly sure where yet, because I'm not sure how long the campaign is going to last, but it is going to basically be a prequel to the Terminator movie, the original Terminator. And the players are going to be playing, you know, like a group of the Resistance who are leading up to whatever this major blow to the AI system, Skynet, that they did. So the players will probably go through on some missions to, you know, take out Skynet or, you know, damage it in a major way, do something or get information. And it's going to lead up to the point where John Connor sends Kyle Reese back in time to 1984 in response to Skynet sending the Terminator back to 1984. Now, I'm sure that, you know, that's a lot to try and comprehend. And like I said, you know, the whole timeline and the, the, that, aspect storyline of the Terminator series is really mind-boggling um especially because they did they had Terminator 3 which kind of changed things up a bit and then they did the Sarah Connor Chronicles which is you know a complete different offshoot that happens to exist and then they got Salvation and now they're coming out with Terminator Genesis and to be honest I mean they're all good movies and the you know, Sarah Connor Chronicles was a really good show as well but I, I think they're starting to get a little overwhelmed and to the point where they're not exactly sure what they have going on. And I think with the uh, Terminator Genesis, they're trying to rectify that a bit. But, you know, to get back to the point here. Okay, here are some spoilers. So if you haven't seen the Terminator, you know, obviously go turn this off and go watch it or else be prepared to be spoiled. Right here at this little mark when the campaign is going to take place, I was trying to think of what I could do. Uh, you know, to keep things interesting and fresh. And that's why I decided to do, basically do a prequel of The Terminator. Um, it's never exactly answered who John Connor is exactly. It's never really explained where Skynet came from. Um, there's some other little oddities that aren't explained. And I also wanted to put in, I think it's a great time for the players to try and, you know, have a game going because there's so much going on. People basically live in bunkers below the ground. Um, Above, we have the Terminators and the Hunter Killers and Skynet and all his computer systems and machines um, taking over the world. Um, there's just piles upon piles of bones and skulls, and there's like big tank machines rolling around. And, you know, all these things that are, you know, trying to eradicate and completely kill humans. They also have where the Terminator is um, basically an infiltration unit. It is, and it looks exactly like a human. It bleeds. And, you know, it, it's, it's basically... Uh, human shell but within the, all the mechanics so it's almost like a cyborg now uh, i don't know how to explain it i thought that would be a great spot for the players to come in because there are so many opportunities like i said they can go on missions to deal with skynet they can deal with missions from uh, rebel units or you know people who um have been enslaved by the machines and think that they're you know on the better side of things they can have to deal with terminators infiltrating their units they're going to have to deal with radiation from the nuclear fallout and i mean there's just so many different things in missions and we can add mystery we can add some little bits of horror in here in sci-fi so you know the opportunities here are great now there's two main questions i ask myself when i'm starting a campaign campaign and it's basically, you know, what do I want the players to know and what do I want myself to know? And with that, I'm able to get some ideas on questions that I want answered with the game. I hate to come up with, you know, the big bad evil guy in the very beginning of the game and have that all this work and the ideas and what I have going on and the plots all just ruined. So 
most of the time when I start a campaign, I will talk to the players and ask for them what they want. Um, I'll get some questions that I have about the game, some different concept ideas, and I almost let them design the plot hooks for me. Um, when you talk to the players and you're able to get that information from them, or when you give them the creative ability to come up with some stuff, they're very much more likely to actually follow it on that because they want to find out what happens too. You know, for example, if uh, one of the players comes up with some sort of labyrinth that his character needs to go visit to get some object of, you know, famous abilities or something, then they're probably going to go take that route. And you don't even have to come up with an idea of why the players did all the work. Now, for this one, we have two main questions here. What do we know and what don't we know? Now, this is in reference to the Terminator movie. That's the only movie I'm going off of for this game. I probably will have some uh, bits of Terminator 2 pop in only for pop culture references or for the fun of it. I don't really foresee any actual use coming from the movie itself. So, what do we know? We know the humans have dealt a major blow to Skynet. We know that that's happened because that's why the AI, that's why Skynet sends the Terminator back to destroy John Connor. He's, you know, he's that thorn in its side that it wants to get rid of. And whatever the humans have done to make, do this major blow has put the human resistance on the upper hand and they're starting to win this war. Thing is, we have no idea what this blow was. So that leaves me one whole campaign mission right there just, you know, to come up with right there. And I'm, like I said, I'll probably let the players kind of do it. You know, at the very beginning of the game, you know, I'll ask them, hey, what kind of major blow did you deal to this system? And see what they come up with. All right. Next question that we know is that John Connor sends Kyle Reese and Sumner back in time. Now, Sumner, um, Kyle Reese only mentions like in maybe one or two sentences all the time, the entire movie. But apparently he sent two individuals back, John Connor did. He sent the Kyle Reese and the Sumner person back. Sumner didn't make it, we're told. So who he is, I'm not really sure. But, you know, the interesting thing here is that he sends Kyle Reese back in time. Now, this is where there's a, you know, a, a major spoiler alert right here. We later learn in this movie that Kyle Reese is John Connor's father. Which, you know, that, that's almost a mind blowing, you know, revelation in this movie, but there's a catch there, which we'll get to in just a moment. Next, we know that Kyle has a picture of Sarah Connor. Now, it is assumed that throughout this movie that Kyle has a very big fascination with Sarah Connor, and that he's apparently, you know, he's essentially in love with her, And but we don't know why or how he got this picture. Okay, now, on the sides of what we don't know, we have who is John Connor's father? Now, I know I just said that Kyle Reese is John Connor's father, but in the original timeline, that is impossible because in the original timeline, as we go from you know 1984 up to 2029, when Kyle Reese goes back, Kyle Reese did not exist back in 1984, originally timeline. You know, I'm not looking at any of these other things here, you know, with that. Kyle Reese wasn't born until somewhere around 97 or when there was the fallout. I don't know the exact date. So that means that John Connor in this original timeline has to have a different father or something. There must be some sort of paradox or something happening there. Okay. Now the next question, let me bring that back, is what is Skynet's origin? Again, major spoiler here, but we learn in Terminator 2 that Skynet is created from the chip that is found in the original Terminator from 1984 and that Terminator's arm, which is left over after the machine is crushed in a hydraulic press. The only thing left is this arm. And a guy, you know, apparently he comes into work the next day, finds this arm, tears it apart, and he's able to, you know, learn about the advanced computers, advanced chips in this arm, and he creates Skynet. And from there, Skynet you know, following Terminator 2 timeline, Skynet evolves, and eventually there's a whole other timeline that goes with Terminator 2. But the thing is, just like we don't know who John Connor's father is because Kyle Reese didn't exist, we don't know the origins of Skynet in the original timeline because there was no Terminator for this guy to find. Somewhere Skynet evolved from somewhere else or some how else. It's, you know, both of those questions are like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And 
you know, I want to explore those two questions in this campaign because I have some ideas that I'm going to toss in there and, you know, I don't want to give anything away right now, but, you know, that'll give you a basic idea of what's to come in the campaign. And the last question is, why did Sarah become a fighter? Now, in the Terminator movie, she ends up, you know, becoming this fighter, this resistance, and teaching John Connor all of these things and how to survive because Kyle Reese tells her about the forthcoming war with Skynet. Uh, you know, before she met Kyle Reese, she's basically just your typical 1980s girl. She, I mean, she works at a diner, nothing fancy. She likes to go out and have a drink and party, you know, with her friends in the evenings. And, you know, she's just a normal early 20s-year-old girl. Something happened in this original timeline where she ended up having to turn in over, you know, a completely different personality and become some sort of survivor, which in turn she's taught to John Connor and John Connor used in the war against Skynet. So if I haven't blown your brain yet, you know, stick with me. Now, this campaign is going to be using a rule system called Earth AD.2. Um, it's a very generic system in the sense that it can be applied to a huge array of different types of games. Um, it is designed for post-apocalyptic. And so I'm gonna be using that as the basis of the rule system and from there, we are going to, you know, change a few of the, I'm not changing any rules, but I am tweaking some of the uh, races, or they're called stocks for this game. Because, you know, for example, in the Earth AD book, they have like evolved animals and they have aliens. Things like that I won't be using because there are no aliens or evolved animals in Terminator. So they can just kind of be tossed aside. Now, there are some um, stocks that I will be using, like the humans. I will be using mutants, even though there's not really technically any mutants in the Terminator. I do think that the uh, nuclear fallout would have started creating them, so mutants are going to sort of be like a new thing just starting to crop up. And what was the other one? Um, cyborgs. Now there's ROMs and Rippers for the Earth AD 2.2 uh, system. And I'm basically kind of using the... Um, Ripper, I believe it was, but it's, I renamed it the Cyborg and kind of changed a couple little things just to fit the system, but the Cyborg would basically be your Terminators, or the other machines that the human resistance has been able to somehow get a hold of and reprogram, which is what they do for Terminator 2. They reprogram the um, T-800 into somebody who's going to go back in time to help John Connor. So that is the basics of what I'm doing for this campaign. Now, it's probably going to be starting somewhere around the end of January. And like I said, I'm going to be going through and doing a prep session um, probably every Monday morning after the game takes place because usually it's on Fridays or Saturdays. So Monday morning I'll be able to, you know, recollect my thoughts and prepare for the next week ahead. Um, I am going to go through several more of these campaign prep sessions with you, showing you how I get things ready, um, the information that I use, and, you know, what, where I go from here. So, if you got any questions, comments, throw them in the comments section below. Um, you know, like I said, the Terminator movies are excellent, excellent movies. Especially Terminator Two is by far my favorite. But in the you know the time travel aspects of it is really, it's very fascinating and it's extremely confusing. And I think they get it even more and more confusing with every new movie and show. But you know, let me know what you guys think of the movie and everything below and. Probably here in a day or two, I'll have another prep session up as we're going to start taking a look at the Earth-82 system and how I'm going to be using that with this uh, campaign. So have a great one, guys, and keep rolling them dice.